Systems Biology Ireland is physically located in UCD and it sits in a building adjacent between the Conway Institute and the Charles Institute. We currently have a team of approximately 60 members, which includes 15 group leaders, 28 PhD students and postdoctoral researchers, and 11 operational staff members supporting the centre. Our researchers include biologists, biochemists, physicists, engineers, bioinformaticians, statisticians, computational scientists and modellers. Importantly, in SBI, both wet lab or clinical researchers and dry lab or computational scientists are physically housed together under one roof. And this really is an ideal structure for systems biology research. SBI is strongly committed to the highest standards of research and training. Our centre has supported and trained over 200 research funded staff from over 30 countries. And notably, in the case of former postdocs and research fellows, the majority actually go on to establish their own independent research groups or to join groups in other top international institutions. The centre has secured over 54 million euro in funding from exchequer and non-exchequer sources. We are also quite proud that a panel of international reviewers have actually ranked SBI as one of the top systems biology centres in the world. So I was always very much interested in cancer and how cells communicate and what goes wrong when you have a disease like cancer where this obviously breaks down. And so we started out using all these modern technologies where we now can catalog, you know, vast number of genes and everything. And that's great, fantastic. But of course what you get is something like a telephone book. You know, it's a number, a long list of names. These are all the genes and the proteins, but it doesn't really tell you what they do and how they interact with each other and how they work together and what goes wrong when it goes wrong. And so I started working with computing scientists in order to sort of make some of these connections. And then at one point I found out that people call the systems biology. And then Science Foundation Ireland uh, had a made a big initial investment uh, where they started the Systems Biology Centre in 2009 and it was Boris Kolodenko who is uh, one of the most prominent figures in the dynamic modelling field. He was the first one who ever modelled a, a communication network in sales and uh, he came over first and I came over shortly after that and then we set up Systems Biology and uh, so what we are doing at the moment uh, is that we have a basic research program which is really about understanding biological communication networks and we use uh, a lot of these modern omics technologies like genome sequencing, proteomics to map the components of these networks but then we use computational models where we then uh, find out what the function is and <coughs> how we can understand that function. And this is all sounds all very basic and is very interesting, but the nice thing is that actually more or less straight away you can apply these things to biological situations. So for instance, we are using this to analyze what's going wrong in cancer. For instance, everybody knows cancer has mutations and it is a genetic disease. But what these mutations are actually doing, you know, why they screw up a cell's growth control is actually much less understood, but this is exactly what we are trying to figure out. When we organized the institute together with Walter Kolch, we discussed that fundamental or basic science should be underlying all our activities. And the reason is that without fundamental science, even if you do some applications, and we will do applications, so we do applications uh, such as translational medicine, without basic, without fundamental science, this river will dry, the river of applications will dry. So in 2002, quite after that when human genome was sequenced. People in the Sanga Institute, they just decided, and their colleagues decided to go and to see mutations in genomes of cancer cell lines. So they picked about 500 uh, cancer cell lines and they look at mutations in the uh, MAP kinase pathways because it was known again from fundamental science that this pathway is very important for self-proliferation growth, differentiation.
And what they found that the mutations in B. Raff, this is a kinase of the Raff family, is persistent in about 60% of melanomas. And this was purely fundamental results because this is a fundamental page paper published in Nature. But then pharmaceutical industry hop on the top of these results and started to think that BRAF is important in cancer and therefore inhibitors for BRAF would make difference for people with melanoma. And indeed, uh, the first uh, inhibitor for, specific inhibitor for this BRAF was done by a <coughs> company which organized Professor Yossi Schlesinger, uh, who is now in Yale, and they developed this drug which was called Vimurafenib and uh, which was approved very quickly by FDA because it shows the remarkable effectiveness against melanoma and uh, patients and patients who should basically die in a few weeks they, they recovered. But after that new phenomenon unfortunately appears, appeared that um, these patients develop resistance and in about six months cancer returns back and the uh, <coughs> outcome was basically fatal. And nobody could understand why this resistance occur and what causes this resistance. And then we thought about this and <coughs> I Again, we applied purely computational work and I mean based on the physics and physical chemistry and I discovered that drug resistance resulting from uh, the ability of kinase to dimerize and is rationalized by thermodynamic factors. So basically a branch of physics with this, which is called thermodynamics could explain this observation why this drug could not work more than six months. And then we found that it basically tells us what to do. It tells us that you need two inhibitors which attack the same binding sites, the same pocket of BRAF kinase. And then later when Alexei Ruchlenka came he was instrumental and we made a model, a huge model, it's more than 10,000 equations, and also equations were confirmed in experiments, I mean uh, the results, the predictions of the model were confirmed in experiments, and we showed that uh, this uh, <coughs> two inhibitor combinations uh, can overcome oncogenic RAS signaling and therefore resistance of these patients and melanoma. So in leukemia, which is what I'm interested in, we know a huge amount about um, the genetic landscape of leukemia and the different pathways and different genes that are affected. But the amount of information we have makes it very difficult to really precisely target important clinical questions. So I was very excited that we had this institute in Ireland, which is a combination of using these computational techniques and traditional laboratory experiments to tackle scientific questions. The other thing I was very interested in as a, as a clinician scientist, although I don't look after people so much anymore, was how closely SBI was linked to the clinic. So, for example, my group is partially based at the Children's Hospital in Crumlin. I think when that's the case, we, we get to feel very close to the hospital and the patient treatment, and it allows us to really be aware of the important clinical questions, so that allows us to direct our research that way. So I think that works in two directions. I think that allows us to bring the science to the clinic and also the clinic to science. Happy anniversary, SPI. <laughs> <laughs>